Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, so in this video, uh, or in the last two videos, we talked about really the home building industry and when they see a need, how they build more houses. Uh, we just started talking in the last video about how there's a delay between starting to build a house and finishing that house. And that delay can cause a problem if you build houses based on your observation of the need, like how many people are living outside of of houses. So this is the model. Uh, what we're going to do entirely, and I went through this in the prior video, what we're going to do I think the whole time in this video is model it in Excel. I'll show you what the graph ends up looking like, which is different than what we thought. And then I'll come back to the board and talk about ways to you know, adjust why it happened and adjust your thinking to have a better outcome. Okay, so we'll go to Excel now and model this. Thanks. Okay, great. Now we're going to uh, put the video, or sorry, the model in Excel. And instead of editing the old Excel, I thought it would just be easier uh, for me to do a new one since it has enough uh, differences in there. So again, let's do the constants up, up top here. So we have the population as 10,000. We have the time constant, so I forgot to put in PowerPoint that one, but if you recall that was a goal time, goal to fill gap, which was three months. Let's call that time goal. We have time to build, which is 12 months. So now we'll do the main model. So we'll do time in months. Okay, that's time. We'll do our stocks. So beginning houses in progress. We'll call house whip for work in progress. Ending houses whip. And uh, we'll just start that at zero. Beginning, finished, houses, ending, finished, houses. And if you recall, we're starting at 1,000 houses. Uh, OK. The beginning of a stock is always the ending of the period before. OK, so let's talk about building. That, um, that flow right there. So we have observed need for houses. Observed, let's call it need for houses. Which is the goal, the goal which is 10,000, minus how many we have, which is 1,000. So we have a need for 9,000 houses. We're going to build with a goal of closing in three months. So you take the need for houses divided by the three months. Uh, therefore, you will build 3,000 in that first month, or at least start 3,000. So the work in progress now, we'll, it started at zero. We have the flow into it of building. So now there are 3,000 houses in progress. OK. Um, let's actually do finishing. Because finishing is also a flow out of that stock. And finishing is the number of houses in progress divided by the time to build. OK, see that diagram? So the number of houses in progress, always at the beginning, or else you get a circular reference, uh, divided by the time to build. OK, so in that first month, we finished zero houses because there were none in progress. OK, now we move to this stock. So that's that stock. We have a flow in, we have a flow out. Actually, let me adjust this formula. Beginning houses plus the flow in minus the flow out. OK, finished houses has a flow in of finishing. You can do it like 
that, where you can just use the row above. Uh, it has a flow out of decaying. This is the number of finished houses divided by their average age. Okay, so 27 houses will decay in that first month. Uh, okay, so the ending is the beginning plus the flow in minus the flow out. Okay, so actually I have 972 um, finished houses at the end. And I believe that's our model. Let me just copy it once, see if there's, I can see any problems with it. Okay, bigger gap, build slightly more, finish a bunch now. Um, okay, so we have more in progress because we started a whole lot more. On the finished houses front, we did finish some, just a few decayed. Okay, so we went up in houses. Good. Okay, what I'm going to do is let me copy this for a couple alphabets. Uh, it goes down to row 16. I'll go up to here. Okay, and then let's look at our houses. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to the board in a sec and explain this, but you can see that it started at 1,000. Instead of smoothly going to 10,000, it overshot it. Okay, so the builders ended up building too many houses. And then the house count started to go down because of the decaying. And it didn't stop at 10,000 there either. It undershot it. And then well, we got to 10,000, but then then it kind of oscillates. The oscillations get uh, damper, but it actually ends up with a house count. It has two problems here. It it oscillates. It overshoots and oscillates, which is a big waste of time when all you needed was 10,000 houses. And it's going to stabilize at a number under 10,000 houses. So it actually has two different uh, problems. Um, so what I'm going to do is let's go back to the board and talk about it, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll adjust this model to try and fix those problems. Okay? Okay, hopefully you found that uh, interesting. We built that model, and you can see it doesn't smoothly end at 10,000, which is the goal of the goal-seeking loop, the balancing uh, loop. It overshot it, and then it undershot it, and then it ended up stabilizing. Um, you know, it oscillated, but with slightly uh, smaller oscillations, uh, dampening oscillations, and then it stabilized at a number below 10,000. So that's kind of problematic. Uh, one is this oscillation is money lost. Um, some industries, they kind of overshoot capacity, then undershoot. So there's a lot of contraction of workforces and expansion, and that's very uh, ineffective and waste of, waste of money. Uh, and such. And, uh, and secondly, we didn't even build the 10,000 houses for the population. We ended up at 9,000 or something like that. So what we're going to do in this, the next video, I'll close this one, is talk about why it caused that problem and, uh, and what different strategies are to, uh, to resolve it.